afterwards. And I'd like to start by thanking Rick for bringing us together in Sanker, Scotland. It's been an amazing week. And I want to start with a quote um, by Mary Oliver. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? I've thought about that a lot this week. This piece started being about urban migration and how we go from small cities like this to larger spaces and the choices that one living in Sankar might make. This is a small town, obviously, with an oversized history. I think we learned a lot this week about the history. And it's enormous. And we learned that Mary Queen of Scots came here in refuge. So I started thinking about how we make these decisions. So we think, for example, about agriculture. Agricultural practices are changing. People are having an increasingly difficult time making their living that way. Think about Beverly. You and I grew up in, in Ohio. And Rust Belt, mm -hmm. do you stay, do you go? So I started with this lock and the sense of being locked in. How do we lock ourselves in as we're making our own decisions about what we can do? Are we locked in by our own choices, by the depth of our history, our roots, or by external sources? Here's this lock, are we locking ourselves in? And I started thinking about how we have to make choices with life in mind. These are rubbings from the grave of a child that was given seven months to live, seven months only. We have more freedom than that and more time to make our choices. And so I started thinking about Sankar and I took that pristine piece of paper from the museum and added this layer of deep history over it. And then this little butterfly, which may just look like a little piece of whimsy, like, oh, that's whimsy. We all have it. You think of a butterfly, and uh, Encyclopedia Google tells us butterflies have a lifespan of just one to two weeks. So it's what we do with our time and how far we can go in our geographies. The sheet music that here is here is all about movement. So there are bird thoughts, and then one was a soldier's song. Soldiering would take you away from home. Here's I saw a ship sailing. And I was just really playing with this theme of how we decide where to be. Do we decide for ourselves? Are we decided for? What choices can we make together um, as we think about community and how we can support each other in the choices that we make? That's it. Thank oh, you wow. very much. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Where are the pieces? So this was the original photograph that I took that you saw at the beginning. This mm -hmm. is my sense of place and that locked in. I also just thought it was a beautiful right, right. photograph. Remember that, I remember that part. Um, some of this is street debris. Mm -hmm. So this is a piece, I think, of yellow paint that came up off the road. <laughs> this is just a piece of turquoise greenish trash that I found when David took us up to the Tristine place and I washed it and put it in. These were scraps, of, you know, going with Rick to um, Dumfries and seeing the careful work that you do to curate thrift store materials for us <laughs> to use in this place. Uh, I mean, I felt so alive being able to pick through someone else's curated <laughs> materials. Uh, my husband might not think of what's in my studio as well curated because it looks bad in there. It's all organized and so these just beautiful pieces coming together. And in some ways this piece is a real failure because what happens with me is that I have wanted to be able to work in neutrals forever and a year. And I sit down at the table and I'm going to do neutrals, I'm going to be disciplined about this, I'm going to learn and grow in that space. I can't do it. <laughs> I am a, a magnet for color. I'm just drawn, so yeah. drawn to it. And so that happened here too. And then just stitching that I put into these old books, maps, um, and then just little dabs of acrylic paint. And the, I think my favorite things in here are, are um, like Cecil was saying, the rubbings from the gray stones and just the very subtle overlay that you can put on and add. Um, texture that says a little something but doesn't yell at you. Mm -hmm. Beautiful palette. Why do you 
want to force yourself to try to work in a neutral tone if like you feel compelled with the colors? Because I feel like there's got to be some learning in there. And one of the things that I try to do is strip back because I overwork pieces. And so if I could just scale back and scale back, um, I think I could get better at my work. But I've not had that discipline yet. I just continue to get um, wild, and then the piece starts to speak to me, <laughs> and the voice draws me somewhere else. <laughs> I don't think I'd describe that as wild. No. Yeah, and I, and I do think, like, just because of the color palette of this town, it is more neutral. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and so I think without trying, you kind of did do something a little bit more neutral. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't say it's a failure. Thank you. I'm yeah. really grateful to be here with all of you this week. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.